Destructuring is a way to take existing structured data and assign variables based off of that data. In this example on MDN, we can see that this constant foo, which is equal to an array of one, two, and three, where they can destructure those values as red, yellow, and green based off of the order of that array. To test this on their own, we're going to start off with this object called Mooncake. We can see that it has a few keys like ID, name, status, and a few others. The cool thing is destructuring works on both objects and arrays. When we destructure from an object, we're going to use the keys that are already defined inside that object to grab the value. For instance, if we wanted to create a new constant called name, where we can grab that value of its name, we can create a new destructured statement where we can add the key, which is our new variable of name, which we're going to destructure from our mooncake object. Now, if we console log out our name variable, we can see that when we run this script, we're grabbing that mooncake name straight from our name key. Similarly, if we wanted to grab the status, we can add that to our destructure statement. And if we change our console log to status, we can run our script again, and we can see the value of status. Now there's a lot of data still included in the rest of that object. So what if we wanted to get a new object that included only the data that we didn't use? We can add a new value to our destructure statement where we're gonna use the spread operator along with the variable name, which here we'll use rest. And if we change our console log to that rest, we can see that when we run that script, we get a new object, which includes the ID, species, and abilities, but not the name and status. We don't have to name that rest. We can name that whatever we want. Say we wanted to name that other, we can still run our script and we can see that we still get that object. The nice thing about rest is it's just a descriptive way to name that group of values. In this particular example, we're using data that we know is defined. But say we wanted to grab the value of species and make sure that there's always a value available, even if this value is undefined or if we don't even have it at all. When we know how this data for our mooncake object is defined here, if we're using data from an API or an external source, we might not know what exact values it has. So if we're going to try to grab the species value from our object, we can also set a default value. We can do that by adding an equal sign and then our default value, which let's just say unknown. And now if we update our console log statement, we can see that now when we run that script, we get that value of unknown. When we're destructuring, we also have the ability to rename variables. If I don't like that this is called name, I can use the colon operator and I can change it to whatever variable I want, such as full name. And we can see that this works by updating our console log statement and then running our script again, which we can still see Mooncake. Now, so far we've just worked with an object, but as we saw before on MDN, we can also work with arrays. To test this out, we're gonna use the abilities array that's already included in our object. So to start, I'm gonna create a new destructured statement with an empty array that I'm gonna set equal to mooncake.abilities. Now, previously when we were using an object, we were using the key for each of these values. And while we can access each of those using the index, if we add it to the array, we can't actually use that inside of the destructure statement. Instead, the variable that we wanna to assign to each of these different abilities is going to reflect the order of it that's inside of this array. So for instance, if I create a new variable inside of my array and I call it hover ability, and if we console log out this value, we can see that when we run the script, we get that value of hovering. That's because our hover ability variable is the first inside of the array that we're destructuring which also references the first inside of our abilities array. Another way of putting it inside of our destructure statement, our hover ability name has an index of zero, where inside of the abilities array, hovering the value has an index of zero. So if we add it onto this, and let's call our second one second ability, we should expect that when we console log this out, we're gonna get the second value, which is firing laser beams. And if we update our console log and we run that script, we can see that we get exactly that. Now, even though we're using an array, we still get some of the same features as when we were using an object. For instance, if we only wanted to grab this hover ability, but then have a new array with the rest of the values, we can change this second ability to the spread operator with the word rest like before and update our console log statement. And now when we run that script, we can see that we have a new array with the remaining values. If we expect our abilities array to always have four distinct values, we might want to do something like one, two, three, four. But we know that this abilities array for Mooncake only has three. So if we try to console log that out, as expected, we're going to get undefined. But if we wanted to make sure that always has a value, we can set a default value similar to our object where we're going to put unknown. And if we log that out, we're going to see that value of unknown. Destructuring is a great way to clean up your code with focused variable names and things like defaults where you can avoid having if statements all around your application. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.